2 p.m. and the great wall of water that stormed through the Bremer River has now smothered Ipswich. Everywhere you look, I mean, it's just... It's 360 degrees of water. The sun may be shining, but don't let that deceive you. This is the main street, the heart of Ipswich, a lake of loss and despair. You can just see the tip of the shops. It's just heartbreaking. No radio and no television, no power, so we haven't been over here much. And to think the high tide is yet to come. When you talk to locals in Ipswich, what really strikes you about the difference between here and Grantham is time. Street after street is, is flooded, but locals had time to prepare. They had time to get out, and they had time to take all their precious belongings to safer ground. Michael Downs isn't taking any chances. Well, this morning, there was a puddle in that corner over there, and the rest of the yard was dry. People in the corner there, they evacuated two days ago and he's been through the 74 floods. The threat is very serious, but for 14-year-old Taylor Sherlock, it's all still a bit of a novelty. So, Taylor, have you caught anything yet? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> so your family going to evacuate or are you going to uh, stay put? Probably stay put. It's up to Mum, really. Let's just hope in all of this, like for Jane, there's some hope. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for me here. Much appreciated. So many sad stories, aren't there? And more to come, no doubt. It's uh, difficult to comprehend the vastness of this natural disaster without taking to the air. This afternoon, I went up in the Channel 9 chopper as Brisbane braces itself for the flood peak. Here we are. This is uh, downtown Brisbane. That's the Victoria Bridge down there, um, the main stretch of the Brisbane River and the freeway. And it's only hours away from going under that bridge. I never thought I'd see anything like that. When you hear, heard about the 74 floods growing up here in Brisbane, you thought, well, the Wymanhoe Dam has absolutely got that nailed. That is never going to happen again. And I just never imagined I would see anything like this. This is my hometown transformed, and, and not transformed for the better, and, and on the verge of an even worse catastrophe than we're looking at. that you keep hearing today here in Brisbane is just how strange it is. What a beautiful day, what beautiful blue skies. And then you look down and here's the Brisbane River that we all love. We you know you grow up in Brisbane and, and people love the river. We've got the promenades, the walkways, the, the river concerts, the river fire. It's a, such an essential part of Brisbane life. And here it is taking over the city, this big brown river that we've all been so proud of. And look at it. Versus back to the most frightening thing is, it's just the beginning. In all these areas that you're used to biking and, and walking along and, um, and taking for granted, have just gone under. And I tell you what it's like from the air, it's shocking. It's sad. It's sad to see people's businesses destroyed. It's sad to see people's homes destroyed. But I tell you what the main feeling is today, I'm frightened. There is so much water coming this way, and when you look at it like this, you can't imagine where it's all going to go. And we've seen what that water did in other places. You can just see everything that's going to go under. Um, places now that are, that are up to their roots, their neighbours are bound to go. So looking at, at it from the air, it's just shocking and, and frightening to think of, of what's ahead. Thousands of homes inundated, hundreds of streets, um, 50 plus suburbs and really we're at the tipping point now if you look at that you just think how could it possibly get worse but we're, we're ensured that it will it's going to get worse look, look at this if we just look ahead and, and down at the stadium it's, a, it's turned into a swimming pool some kind of aquatic park it's well, that's Lang Park, isn't it? Directly below us, the football fans. A shocking sight. Look at that, Lang Park, Suncorp Stadium, turned into an aquatic centre. That state of origin stuff down there, and you could go for a swim in there. 
extraordinary, extraordinary pictures. And there is a sense of a, of a bubbling panic here in Brisbane that's rising. But that hasn't stopped neighbours from pulling together. Chris Allen reports on the residents fighting hard to save not only their own homes, but also each other's. <laughs> Make sure we don't leave any of the personal stuff in. We were helping the neighbours at about four o'clock this morning and it was sort of two doors down um, just at their driveway, so it'll be at our driveway in another hour. Like passengers on the Titanic, the residents of Graceville on Brisbane's south side are in a desperate race to save what they can. <laughs> Kent Fallback is one of them. The sun hitting the water, it's all very nice, but it's your average. It is your average. You feel like you're on the Titanic? Ever seen anything like this? No, I definitely not. Across the road from Kent, Julie Bannister is fleeing her home of 15 years. We've um, taken everything to the next floor up, but we'll put it in the field and we'll take everything to the night our neighbours went this morning. Today the rain has stopped, the sun's even shining. You could be fooled into thinking the crisis is over, but one look at this and clearly it's not. The water is slowly creeping up the street inch by inch, swallowing one house after another. How's it going, Michelle? Got some books. How many trips have you made now? Maybe four. Michelle's home is almost totally submerged, but she hasn't given up, diving in and swimming through the water to rescue what she can. So how long do you think you'll have to get stuff out? Um, there's another top bookshelf. Uh, top shelf. Oh, nice. okay. We did not keep you. No. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Everything you own in there? Everything. <laughs> yeah. Around the corner, Selena and her partner Dan are using a tinny to rescue what they can. Heartbreaking for you to see it like this? Yeah, as we saw the face. Yeah. That's the main thing. Where did you spend last night? Uh, at a friend's house. Yeah, lots of friends coming to help this morning, trying to get out what we can. Exceptionally heartbreaking. Dan Hinterreiter has just built here and can't believe his house is about to be consumed by muddy water. This is a lovely home, It was. still home. Let's get the kids back here. So, get home, I'm a carpenter by trade, so 15 years I've been renovating. You know, I've finally got to the last stage and <laughs> the water starts to come up, so it's a bit of a, bit of a sort of painful thing. To Across the road, Dan's neighbour is dealing with the same loss. It's got to knock up into the water now. The hardwood frame will still be there, though. It'll be harder than ever. You know? so, that's the bright side. That's, that's a good thing, yeah. The resilience of the flood victims is remarkable. Even more moving, the neighbours helping one another like the one who came to warn Dan time was running out. This is Oxley Road, normally one of the busiest streets on Brisbane's south side. Today, the only way you can get down it would be by boat. Most of the people here have already fled voluntarily. There are still people trying to move furniture out as the water rises. Nearly all of these houses went under in 74 and predictions are that they will all go under again. It's worse than there's no beer in the fridge because the fridges are up there. Anyway, don't you enjoy your phone? Um, I don't want to bring the kids here because they'll feel emotional. Yeah, I don't even want to look in this room because everything's sort of floating about. It's heartbreaking. It is, but we've had warnings, so we're lucky. Everyone's going to need a lot of help to get back on their feet and Australia, I'm sure, is going to get right behind them. Of course, it is not only homes that are in danger, it is people's livelihoods. This afternoon, I caught up with Norm Holman, whose truck repair business is under a rising sea of water. So we're looking now, Norm, at your office. Yeah. The office is just about a foot under, out of the water. That that tanker there belongs in this yard here. There's trucks under us, under us here. 
Yeah, there's, there's, two, there's, there's, there's two trucks here and there's about four trailers under us. But that's the office, that square section there is our office. So there's your confusions, there's your plant equipment. Yep. There's all our manuals, everything virtually that to run the business. And our equipment's below that. Yeah, it knocks you around. Yeah, this, I lost my son two years ago. He was only 24 and then I got flooded after that and lost all everything and now I've been flooded again. So it's a bit heartbreaking. I'm oh, sorry. And Rob, you brought your boat down just to see if anybody needed a hand? Yeah, we just come down to see if anyone wanted any assistance. And um, and because uh, we come from the north side, it was a little bit too late. It was rising too fast and the authorities have asked everyone to move back from that area. So it we, appears uh, everybody's had to move out of here a little yeah, while ago too. It's uh, left a little bit too late. So where are we now? We're not on a river. No, this is a service road, Ipswich service road. There's the main highway next to us. What's this here? The Skills Timber Yard. He's the first one to get hit. He, all these machineries in that shed there, they all go under. It's been under several times. 